Welcome to this presentation. Today we're going to be talking about frames and the finite element formulation of frames. And we'll be doing that uh, quote unquote by hand as well as in MathCAD. So the math techniques we can use in, use in MathCAD you can also do by hand. Uh, it's all linear algebra, just ones with a computer and ones uh, by yourself writing out on paper. All right, so we're going to be doing that today. Uh, for the setup here, go to the lecture materials folder. You can find the link below in the notes. Uh, in there, you can find folders for notes as well as MathCAD. And since we're doing the MathCAD, grab that uh, file download. Everything we're doing today should work, again, in MathCAD Express, the free version. Uh, you don't need a license for it. So that should work well for you. And then uh, notes as well as basically everything I'm going to be, you're going to see in the slides uh, with a little bit more text to for explain things. So the finite element formulation of frames, uh, definition wise, what are frames? That we're calling them structural members that have rigidly connected joints. So that where they connect here, different points on our frame, uh, either welted, welded or bolted uh, at those points. So if we reduce this frame to several elements, uh, and we have nodes at all the connection points. We'd have six nodes, and then uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, I got four, five, six elements. All right. So notice the individual elements will experience rotation, lateral displacement, and axial deformation. All right. So these guys here will be as if we, if we had the distributed load on top, and we had a point load on. On element six, yeah, so point on element six, uh, we'd have these would act like beams. So we'd have the lateral deflection as well as some rotation here at node two, and we'd have some axial deformation here um, for those receiving the load there. So this kind of involves everything, um, both axial um, loading as well as lateral loading as well. So the frame elements are a combination. Of axial members and beams. So we put these together. We've already done the, the last two lectures, as you hopefully looked at, um, at, looked at them. Uh, we talked about axial members, focused on that, and then it basically trusses a two-force member. And then we looked at beams, where we had both the lateral loading and the rotation. So we're going to combine those here for our frames. All right. So let's look at a frame element. So we have the overall member here between nodes I and J up here. And uh, if we look at the uh, local uh, displacements. We have the axial dis, uh, axial displacement, so U sub I, because it's happening at node I, and one, one is going to indicate the axial displacement here. Uh, UI2, two represents the lateral displacement that's happening, so that's going to be in our Y direction. Again, the X and Y here, lowercase, that's a local coordinates. So then if we go to UI3, that's going to be the rotation that's occurring at node I. So UI3, so one, axial two lateral and three uh, rotation and so if we look at node j we see the same things going on there so overall summary each node has three degrees of freedom we have axial displacement at nodes i and j and that's represented by the one we have lateral displacement at nodes i and j represented by a two and the rotation at nodes i and j represented by three right? and those are all in local displacement with lowercase letters indicating our local displacements. All right, so we need to transform this thing. We need to go from local coordinates to global coordinates. And uh, so we're going to do this relationship. We're going to have some transformation that take us from our local to our global coordinates. All right, so this is our transformation matrix. And if you can see, it looks hopefully a lot really similar to what we had um, used before, especially for trusses, as well as axial members. Uh, the thing that's different now is we have an extra row here for rotation um, piece because we now have the six by six because we have three um, degrees of freedom at one node, three degrees of freedom at the other node. So now we have a six by six four element as opposed to a four by four that we looked at before. All right, so that's where it comes from. I just want to highlight, big highlight here. Uh, some books use a transformation matrix that is the inverse or the transpose of the trust transformation matrix. So this one right here, so instead of negative sine theta, you'd have a negative sine theta over here. And the reason they do this is because they look at the transfer matrix going from global to local as opposed to local to global like we are. Right, so just heads up with that. It's fine. It's just how it's just a little bit different. All right. So our local stiffness matrix for bending from the last lecture, right, we came up with 
uh, the local, so lowercase k, the bending stiffness matrix is this. All right? So we don't have any, we're not looking at anything here in the uh, axial uh, displacement. Uh, but then if we look at the local stiffness matrix for axial loading, that's all we have. We don't have any um, displacement laterally or rotation-wise. So we're going to combine those now and just add those together. So for a frame element, we're just going to add the bending to the axial. All right? Just add them up right? and put them together. So hopefully pretty straightforward there. So our global stiffness matrix, right? we were in local coordinates. This, this right here, this is local coordinates, so lowercase k there. And here we go to uppercase k. So we're gonna, that means our global stiffness matrix for frame element. Uh, we need the transformation matrix times our local stiffness matrix times the transform of the transformation matrix, right, or the inverse. All right. So let's do that. We got an example here. We're going to do it quote unquote by hand. So we got our overall um, frame structure here. All right, a vertical and a horizontal piece. Our areas and moment inertias are given. We've got a distributed load across the top. We've got 80 inches vertically here, 100 inches horizontally. Modulus of 10 times 10 to the 6th PSI. We want to find here is the displacements at each one of our nodes. All right. So here we go. Solution. So first, uh, we need to discretize this thing and get into our nodes and elements. So we got nodes here, node one, node two, node three, and then element one and two, right? Uh, for the pre-processing phase, we still determine the nodes and elements, so we've done that. And uh, we also want to locate those because we're going to need to know the theta, the angle, uh, when we ultimately figure out what our transformation matrix is. So for element one, we're going to say node I is one and node J is two. And for element two, we're going to say element two is I and element three is J. Right, you're looking at the angles. If we're going from two to three, then that's zero degrees. If we're going from one to two, then we have nine degrees up like this. All right. So hopefully that makes sense at this point. So the frame element stiffness matrix and local coordinate system is what we had from before. So just putting it here again in front of you. And we're just going to substitute in for EI, or AE, and over L. So for element one, we have this as our resulting uh, stiffness matrix. And for element two, we have this. All right, so let's go see if we can get that in MathCAD. All right, so come over here. So we got 10 to the sixth for our modulus, uh, area of 10 inches squared, 200 inches to the fourth, and a distributed load of 100 pounds per inch. Find the displacement. All right, so here we go. Here is our stiffness matrix, our local coordinate stiffness matrix in our local form. And actually, I think I've, I call this now the element form, so let me update that. Yeah, save that there. And I mean, I'm going to just pause the video and I'll come back. I want to update these to all the, the new lingo that we're using here. Okay, so as we uh, look, as we go here, um, we have our generic stiffness matrix, so let's plug in now. Um, well, we have our transformation matrix as well. So again, generic transformation matrix, generic stiffness matrix. So let's go in here and solve for the stiffness matrices. Let's see if we can zoom out here a little bit so we can see the whole page. There we go. All right, so for element one, I'm going to put in our angle here. So for element one, we said it was going to be 90 degrees. All right, so we get the 1.5. 571 radians. Uh, again, I'm keeping units outside here because we're mixing radians with inches in the deflection. All right, so over here for the transformation matrix, we get uh, A gets substituted in there, so it solves for that. And then we come down here and we solve for our um, global coordinate form of our element stiffness matrix. All right, so no, in the future, the same thing as before with trusses. Um, you can just do the transform version and just use it like we did with the with the um, the transformation matrix. All right, so that's that, and we'll, we'll take it back to slides to look at it here in just a bit. All right, so over here we have A is zero degrees for element two. All right, and we come up with zero. Oh, sorry, not zero. 
uh, this matrix overall. Just to note here, notice what we got here. It's the identity matrix. The right? reason for that is we are zero, we are horizontal. So it ends up just being the identity matrix. The global coordinates are the same as the local coordinates. All right, so let's go back and check here. So on at one, we got 1.25. We don't have 1.25 here. Well, that's interesting. What do we got going on here? At one point, oh, we got transform version. Where's the transform version? There we go. So there's 90 degrees for the transformation matrix. Zero degrees for element two's transformation matrix. And so, yep, as I talked about, there's the identity matrix. All right, so to determine the global element stiffness matrices, we need to do the uh, transformation matrix times the local stiffness matrix times the transform of the transformation matrix. And this is what I had already done. All right, so there's that 46,875. So here's that 46,875. All right, that looks good. Uh, 125, 125, 1,215,000. Thousand there. All right, and then we go down to element two. It's going to be the same as the local version. So if we just compare those two, no, we don't actually have it up there, right? Because we already would have been right here, but we didn't find KL by itself. So, all right, looks good. All right, so let's go back to the PowerPoint here. All right, so we're going to put the, the stiffness uh, matrix all together to get our system stiffness matrix and to do that we have to go from let's see here so we have three nodes total right one node one two and three each node has three degrees of freedom so three times three is nine so we need a nine by nine so you can see there on the right hand side we got our global deflections right three for each node so up here in the upper left is between nodes one and two which is element one and in the bottom right, we'll have nodes two and three for element two. All right, and you see all the addition that's happening there in the middle. All right, so let me, before we get on to the load matrix, let's hit this again. All right, so we'll slide down here and let's look at it in the system form. So, all right, so we gotta do trans one. So again, we're going from a six by six into a uh, nine by nine. So we're gonna need a nine by six. All right, so let's do nine by, there we go, nine by six. All right, and we wanna keep uh, for nodes I and node J, they're both for one and then two for element one. All right, and then we got a bunch of zeros. Unfortunately, I don't know of a better way. If you know of a better way, please put it in the comments uh, to fill these things out with zeros to start. I do not know of one at this time. And that would be a great, once these things get start getting real big, it's, it would be convenient to know all those values. All right. There we go. And for element two, same thing. We're gonna need another, maybe we'll just copy this guy, save ourselves some work. Uh, get the whole thing. There we go. So I got the gray shade on the whole thing, you can copy it over. And what we can try to do here, we can insert, uh, insert above, insert row above, two, three. And then we'll delete these three rows down here. Delete row, delete row, delete row. And there now we've got uh, node two and node three. And we'll take, put zeros to all of node one. Just gonna copy and paste that row two. Nope, there we get rid of that one. All right, so that looks good. And it equals. All right, so that is our. Um, global system form of both elements one and two and now we just need to add them up so we do it down here and we come up with this big matrix for our global stiffness matrix 
All right, and now onto load matrices. All right, let's go back here now. All right, so load matrix, we have uh, node one, there's nothing happening there. At node two, we have the a horizontal piece that has the distributed load across. So there's omega, distributed load omega across the top of no, element two. And element two is between nodes two and node three. So if we look back to the beam presentation, we have the table that shows what the equivalent nodal loadings are for a load applied to the beam. And so for distributed load, it's negative omega L over two for the uh, axial, for the lateral loading, and negative omega L squared over 12 for the moment, negative omega L squared, um, negative omega L over 2, sorry, uh, for the lateral loading at node 3, and omega L squared over 12 for the rotation moment that's applied to, um, that's applied to node 3. All right, so now we put in here for our force, actual values calculated in through and we get the minus 5,000 pounds at both nodes and a moment of 83,333 pound inches. So we'll go back make sure we can get that. So expand that section so we have that plugged in here. Set equals on that so there's the 5,000 and the 83,333. 83, All right go back here. Oh boundary conditions that's next. All right, so boundary conditions, what do we got? We got this guy's fixed, all right, and this guy's on a roller. So let's see what we got there. Ooh, it's fixed, so all the displacements at node one are all set equal to zero. This guy can roll, so it can rotate, and it can slide left to right. It just can't go laterally displaced, so that means the lateral displacement at node three is zero. All right, so if we apply both those, apply those boundary conditions to our nine by nine uh, setup, we end up with a uh, five by five for a stiffness matrix, and then it has multiplied by the displacement uh, matrix as well as our load matrix that's been reduced down. So let's go back and do that. We need to do our boundary conditions. All right, so let's see, we move down here. So apply the boundary conditions. Looks like I didn't quite get over the page there. So I have this already done. So again, we want to go from a nine by nine to a five by five. So we need a nine by five, and we want to keep we want to keep everything at node two, and we want to keep almost everything at node three. We want to keep the axial displacement at node three, and we want to keep the rotation at node three. But we do not want to keep the lateral displacement at node three. So that's why those are zeros. All right. So if we apply the uh, boundary condition to our stiffness matrix, so we done a five by five there into the Load matrix, get that down to a 5 by 5. All right. I think you know what's next here, right? We're going to solve this thing up. So solving up, we get some values there. It looks like uh, 0 0.0576 inches for our two uh, axial displacements at node 2 and node 3. Uh, for lateral displacement, we just have that at node 2, so negative 0 0.0043. And we got the uh, rotation of 0 0.0014 and 0 0.0018 radians. Let's see if we can get that here in our solution phase. And hit equals, and voila, 0 0.0576, 0 0.0043, 0 0.0014, 0 0.0576, 0 0.0018. All right, and that looks great there. All right, so let's go back here. So... I want to look at frames of ANSYS. Now, I'm not going to do this in this presentation. This will be uh, in the link below. Uh, will be the next presentation. So we'll look at an example um, done in ANSYS. And I think we'll actually have a couple examples of, of those as well. So check me out uh, or check out the presentations um, in ANSYS, and uh, I'll see you there.